Hello there, friends. Welcome to another episode of Coffee Convos. I'm Scott Wakefield, lead pastor here at First Christian Church of Green County, and I am with Carl Del Sorbo. And we are going to have a Coffee, Coffee Convo. Convo. Awkward pause, look at him. <laughs> Coffee Convos is an opportunity for us to have a good convo with some good friends, and Carl Del Sorbo is one of our good friends here at First Christian who's an elder. And uh, so we're going to get to know about him today, this evening. Make sure you jump in the comments and let us know you're with us and uh, editorialize along the way. Make fun of Carl. Um, I was going to say me, but switch it to last (laughs) second there. And uh, ask questions and help steer the conversation. Uh, Hopefully it's a good opportunity for all of us to get to know Carl a little bit and to hear about God's work in his life. So first things first, Carl, tell us about the finger. Oh, yeah. Well, um, I'm notoriously cheap, and uh, <laughs> and everyone that knows me well knows that. And I was decided to bust up an old toilet at home rather than pay to take it to the landfill. Nice. And uh, ended up with stitches in my knuckle. So, how many? How two, many stitches? Two? two stitches. Did you cry? Uh, no. Did it hurt? It did hurt. Did it? I almost cried. <laughs> One tear. <laughs> hey, I, I'm a bit of a crier. I'm a quick crier, although COVID has me all stressed and frustrated, so I'm just even keeled, relatively speaking, mm-hmm. for me, which is not that even keeled yep. during COVID world. So, uh, Carl, tell us about yourself. Tell us how you got to today. Okay. Family history, all that good stuff. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I grew up in Buffalo, New York. Um, That's right. And uh, son of an immigrant. My dad was uh, off the boat Italian. Oh, yeah? And uh, he was the one of the few that married an American. And uh, One of the few of his Del Sorbos? Siblings. So, yeah, there okay. is, he's one of nine. So Wow. So uh, he married an American, and we grew up in Buffalo, New York, and uh, moved down to North Carolina uh, in high school. That's right. North Carolina, yeah. Um, and didn't grow, we didn't really attend church growing up. Um, families were from very different backgrounds. Um, but I was able uh, to attend a uh, church camp along the way and uh, you know, accepted Christ uh, cool. in middle school. Huh. But didn't really didn't know what to do with it yeah. um, until I got to I'm college. I'm 47, and I'm just figuring out what to do, <laughs> yeah, what to do right. with it. <laughs> what happened when I accepted Jesus? I'm still figuring that out. Yeah. So, but when I got to college is where that growth really uh, took off. Got involved with a a Christian ministry or Mm. university Christian fellowship on campus and met some great group of guys. Mm -hmm. Um, Faith really took off. Um, Where'd you go to school? North Carolina State University. Wolfpack. Wolfpack. Um, And that's also where I met my my bride-to-be, Krista. Yes. And she went off to... University of Alabama, Birmingham, um, for grad school, uh-huh. and I followed her down there to grad school, and we got married. Cool. Um, once what, what year did you all get married? We got married in 95. 95. December 23rd. This is our December 20th, 23rd. This is our 25th. Coming up here. Yeah, 25th anniversary this cool. year. So we, <laughs> yeah. Um, so we um, uh, moved here after I graduated, uh, got a job at what was then Altrista Zinc, now it's Artisan. So it was Altrista, then Jordan, and then Jordan, and then no, Artisan. Artisan. Okay. Um, and I've been working there for 23 years. Um, we've had two boys along the way. Yes, uh, indeed. Jared and Carter, um, two young men now. Yes, indeed. And one, one of them. And one of them just recently got married, Jared. Crazy um, old man. You are you are old now. Yes, you're officially I am old. you're an adult. Congratulations. Uh, it well, takes a while. I don't feel like an adult. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so he got married to our beautiful daughter-in-law, Sydney, um, in September, and um, cool, and cool. He, he's in the Air Force. Um, proud of him. Carter graduated as well from Tusculum. And, yeah. And he's applying to medical schools right now. Okay. Uh, so that's still his plan, huh? Yeah. Cool. I knew that was. That's and great. He's seriously dating as well. So. Oh. Um, so cool. Interesting. So what did you study in undergrad? And um, are you still doing something relatively close to what you... <laughs> yes. I, I studied uh, material science and engineering. Oh, okay. And uh, materials yeah. engineering in grad school as well. Um, and I s- kind of still do those things. I'm doing, um, uh, I'm more in management now at this point, but uh, 
where we work, we do a lot of metals based, you know, um, making pennies and making coins. And yes. So, um, so still use some of those skills. So um, you alluded to artists in there making pennies. Um, am I right that the Artisan's the world's largest producer of penny banks, We're blanks, the, or the only? We are the sole um, uh, supplier of penny blanks penny since blanks. the late 90s. Okay. Our one competitor dropped out in the not late 90s. So you've crushed them along the yes, way. Yes, we crushed them. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I want to assume that the only also means the largest? In terms of penny blanks, yeah, was, we're we're the only uh, supplier for, uh, and we're one of the larger blank suppliers in the world. So we also supply blanks to other countries and uh, Philippines and Indonesia and Brazil, all those various countries. So things you can't tell us, yeah, places we can't tell you. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Are there really places like do do uh, do? countries like like how does that happen they just shop around for who to make our coins and you're one of the options uh, some of the larger middle middle uh, mid-sized countries that don't aren't large enough to support their own currency but but are um, small enough or, or large enough at least to have their own minting capability oh. we, we supply them the blank so they're actually stamping minting the coin okay but we're supplying the blank right. uh, that that makes the coin so um, yeah we're sort of one of the larger larger in the in the world so um, and I assume that uh, the coin shortage is good for your business yeah. it was, <laughs> it's a good it's it a good was, time to be in the blanks business yes. that our, our q3 was a uh, very good was a cool quarter for us yeah good. Um, what's but, your yeah. Uh, what's your function in specific terms at work? Um, I'm over operations, so I have all of the manufacturing and engineering and um, you know pl production planning, that those type of responsibilities. Yeah. Cool, cool. Yeah. What is something about Carl Del Sorbo <clears throat> that um, would surprise somebody or that we may not know? Mm. Let's see. Uh, one, uh, I guess uh, w you know a lot of people because of engineering background and I'm introverted as is my as you know my my personality. Um, but I I'm I've got a pretty sarcastic sense of humor <laughs> that once people get to know me they they understand. Uh, I have to be careful with at times. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm pretty can be pretty funny. Um, also, also, my wife mentioned if this came up was the was she she thinks I'm a good dancer, which is what the what which is surprising. What the what? <laughs> yeah. Now we're getting somewhere. Yeah, now we're getting somewhere. That's surprising. I know. <laughs> uh, so um, we won't be da dancing. Tonight. No, for no we record. could demonstrate though. If you um, <laughs> not again. I mean, get it on. No, no, no. Cut a rug, no. as the kids are saying. No, in the probably. 50s? Uh, <laughs> the kids probably haven't 50s said or that 60s, in, somewhere in, there. in 60 to 70 years, maybe. I'm not sure they even said cut a rug in the 70s. Um, so what sorts of dancing? Are we talking like... Oh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm just... I've got decent rhythm, let's put it that way. If I had known when you came up for Elder recently... <laughs> that <laughs> that's why we keep it a secret. <laughs> uh, that's funny. That's awesome. Um... You have siblings? Yes, I have two brothers and a sister. Cool. One older brother and one younger brother and then baby sister. Yeah, cool. So are you, um, you mentioned being an introvert. Um, how strong an introvert are you? Um, I was a strong introvert, and I think with age I'm trying to become more of a Try you're trying to, to I'm you're trying working on that it. extrovert. <laughs> that's that's why I got I'm involved with yeah. That's why I got involved with guest services was to try to get out there and be a little bit more likely to to say you're, hey you're, to people and jump well. Out and you're another example. I, I tell people this all the time, and this is only tangentially related to the introvert extrovert thing. But you mentioned uh, guest services at the Afton campus. I tell people all the time, and I and I see you on Sunday morning. 
one one cool thing about our elders is like they're actually serving. You can mm -hmm. watch them see them serve every Sunday. Mm -hmm. They're all actively involved doing things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, uh, is is being married to Krista part of the extroversion? Uh, She's actually side. an introvert as well, which what? is surprising to most what? people. But yes. I know. Uh, she's the more surprising one. She she is definitely an introvert as so well. So you're both introverted. We're both introverts. Huh. So at night, uh, when you're when you're winding down for the evening, it's just quiet at the Del Sorbo home yes. now. <laughs> it is quiet. <laughs> We're getting close to the uh, empty nesting. And, yeah. And yeah, it's going to be quiet. Is Carter still at home? He is. A, a, he is. Here and there? He is in. A, he graduated. He's taking a year. Oh, um, yes, to right. apply for medical schools right. and, and whatnot, so he's living with us. This it's year. a good time to take off here right now. Yes, it is. <laughs> Between yes, it is. school, yeah. So, are you a thinker or a feeler? Oh, I'm I'm a deep feel. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, that dancing <laughs> no, thing no, makes no, me no. wonder. No, no. I, I'm definitely a. <laughs> you're like you're like mocking feelers. <laughs> like yeah, a, yeah, I'm, right. I'm a deep feeler. Ha, ha, ha. You are sarcastic. That is the sarcastic <laughs> humor coming out right there. Yep. No, I'm a thinker. Definitely a thinker. It's meaning uh, what? What's that look like for you? Um, I'm slower to you know come up with a an answer. I I like to to think through and analyze the situation mm -hmm. um, and and then respond rather than just a, a quick It's not intuitive yeah. as a, like mine is. Yeah. <laughs> um, so you're an engineer? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry all you engineers out there, I don't mean to, you know, just throw you all into this big category of boring thinkers. but. Um, yeah. I, I I am a feeler for sure, mm -hmm. but but I was trained <laughs> as a as a thinker mm -hmm. uh, in in the Wakefield household for sure. Yeah, um, and and we were constantly I would say something, and I think my dad and I had about two years of fights um, in high school where I'd say something, and he would just constantly say, "Think before, <laughs> before you, you talk, mm -hmm. please, please, please." Um, I remember him saying that. It had to be hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times. Um, are you a fighter or a peacemaker? Hmm. I'd, I'd really say I'd probably balance those two. Sure. Um, I, I, interesting thing, I, won't, I don't remember what the personality test this was, but yeah. I ended up as an origin, like zero, zero. It was like a XY thing. Yeah. And, it, and someone said, you, you tend to balance the crowd. So whatever, if a group of strong um, such and such. peacemakers, and I might go the fighter route. Fighter, because it's needed at the yeah, moment. Yeah. I go to whatever's needed. Yeah, yeah. And I've noticed that I do that a lot. Yeah. So I'll be optimistic in a group that has a lot of pessimists, <laughs> and then I'll turn around and be the pessimist in a group of optimists. So Yeah, yeah. Um, is that also, um, I, I do something similar. To in a situation where it's like, hey, th things are healthy and uh, mm -hmm. going fine, uh, cool. Who go right ahead? Let's keep going. Uh, but if it gets a particular way, um, and I feel like the preponderance of the conversation has been a certain direction that needs some balance, mm -hmm. um, and and I think I think that's somewhat leadership and, and caring for a situation. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's good. Um, would you say you are because you're a dancer and <laughs> I wouldn't call myself sarcastic. A dancer. You're a sarcastic dancer. Yes, that's what we're going to call you, that's Carl. What sarcastic I am. dancer Del Sorbo. Um, <laughs> since you've let those cats out of the bag, would you say you are more silly or serious? More. You had to pick one. More silly or serious? Because I, you are. I you am are more silly. I, I was going to say you're sillier than people think. Maybe. Yes, I am more silly than and most. Most people, when they first get to know me, they think, "Well, he's kind of serious." But once once I get to know you, I let it loose, and I'm 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 a silly person yeah. by nature. Yeah, I, I've noticed that a little bit too. Yeah, I, I think I think I'm more serious than people realize mm -hmm. typically. Uh, because in a lot of public situations with people, um, I'm trying to lead the, the thing that needs to happen. Um, and a lot of time it's, uh, 
you know, emotional levity, levity or something like mm-hmm. that. But uh, yeah, I'm I'm a serious freakazoid typically <laughs> when I'm by myself, constantly, yeah, reading things no one cares about. Um, so, disc profile. Mm-hmm. I know you are aware of it and know because we talked about it beforehand. But uh, you're a so I am a strong C and D, both both of them are high, which is the analytical and uh-huh. then kind of the driver. Um, and they have that adaptive and natural, which is, you know, what are you at work? What are you at home? You know, naturally, yeah, yeah. I'm the same. I'm, I'm analytical and I'm a driver. I like to, I'm a finisher type mindset. Once I start something, I'll, I'll stay uh. up all kinds of nights to get something done. Yeah. Um, I, I got to see it through. Yeah. What is that in you? What, 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 what is that? The follow through to the end to get it done? To well, you can ask Krista. I'm not, I sometimes struggle with the starting part, which she's really good at. So we complement each other well. She, she likes to start stuff. Um, but once, like, if we do a home project. She's always starting stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But if, if we do a home project, it's like, okay, let's go to bed. No, I've got to, I got to get it done. <laughs> so I'll be up at two in the morning and getting something, you know. It's yeah. Just, this is the way I, I don't like to leave it not finished. Yeah, I used to be way more that way. Um, I'm less that way now. Yeah. Now I just start stuff and I never finish them. <laughs> <laughs> um, in case you're not aware, don't know what disc profile is, uh, it is the two categories, talking about natural and adaptive. Natural is, there are four categories, uh, dominance, influence, steadiness, compliance are the mm-hmm. four I know of. Is that, is that, does That's that sound? It, yeah. Yeah. Um, those four and it's natural personality and then work and how you ad- adapt, adapt to, to work. work. Yeah. Um, so you're high D, high I C. C and your I and S are low, no, <laughs> non-existent. The <bottom. laughs> There's no color there. Um, yeah, I'm super high D and I and then low S and C and it's same natural and adapted. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we are men of integrity, both places. Yes, That's right. Place. No, it's not. I am who you. I am who I am. Right? The change is actually. Uh, we need people who who change some. Um, it's not a bad thing. Mm-hmm. I just wanted to throw people under the bus that I know are adapted uh, differently than natural who are on staff with <laughs> exactly. us. Exactly. Well, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so you've been at Artisan for twenty three years. You said yes. What have you seen that's changed in Greene County, mm. uh, in the world, in your workplace um, over those years of, I mean, because that's most of your relatively adult life. Mm-hmm. Pretty past, much past most college. Yeah. All my, <laughs> yeah. I came here right out of school. So, yeah. um, whew, that's a good one. Um, <laughs> Other than everything. It's because the speed of change in the last couple decades Crazy. I don't want to sound like that, that, old, that old man. Let's go to old fogey land. In my day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I remember when I came to school with a typewriter. That's right. Which is about true when I got I to did. college. You, you I did? did? Yes. Did, you didn't even have like a word processor or a... We had to go to the lab to yeah. use a computer. Yeah. Um, yeah, I typed some papers at the last minute. <laughs> English papers. Cause, uh, but, uh, I, you know, and that's what I said. As far as sounding like an old fogey, but... I'd say it's it's harder to find people, you know, just that work ethic mindset. That's what I loved about this area um, when I came to work there was the people are great and it's, you know, they've got a strong work ethic and, um, you know, and that that's that's always been our strength of our company and, and what I've seen in this area. Yeah. Um, it's harder to find. But it is harder to find now. Why do you think that is? Uh, well, you know, they're... I don't want to get too political, but there's, you know, there's, uh, you know, you s- sometimes when you're, when you give too much out easy, it, it, it's harder to learn how to, to work for it. And I, you know, I grew up, like I said, a son of an immigrant who worked for everything yeah. um, when he came here to support his family. So uh, we were raised it, almost to a negative at times of huh. work. You know, I, yeah, yeah. I talk about that as in our, in, uh, in our marriage, um, um, testimony that um, work became too big of an idol for yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so it can't man. be a negative. You're a man. That's yeah. a struggle. Yeah. So, but uh, but yeah, I'd say that's probably the biggest change I've noticed. 
Yeah, the incentivizing of work mm -hmm. from a top-down way. That's we'll just leave it at that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we've had some feedback from our people oh. out in the interwebs. Thank you very much. Um, your wife says sarcasm is your love language. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> I'll try to get him ready, um, Krista, by uh, talking his love language. Um, what's the funniest mispronunciation of your last name, Mr. Del Sorbo? <laughs> There's all kinds of them. Um, we've heard. This is coming from somebody who I know very well, whose first name is constantly mispronounced. I would so mine. It's Del Sarbio. Um, I've I've actually got an Arbo, which I'm not sure how they did. Just that. just Arbo. Just Arbo. not even Adele. No. <laughs> I guess they figured that was my middle name. Oh oh oh. But uh, Carl Del. And it's if you just read it, it, it it's pronounced exactly like it's spelled. But but it's difficult. We're the only one in Tennessee. The I only Del Sorbo. That as far I checked years ago. Yes, what does Del Sorbo mean? mean? Do you have any idea? It's some flowering bush. Oh, yes. sarcastic, <laughs> dancing, flowering bush. <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> that's funny. That's awesome. Um, Which, if you know me, I cannot make anything la live that I plant. So that is kind so, of ironic. So, yeah. 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 That's good. Um, all right. We have a question from somebody. A request to tell us about your work in the marriage ministry. Ah, okay. Yeah. You mentioned that. I was going to come back around to that. Yeah. 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 So, yeah so we, uh, both Chris and I, are involved with the marriage ministry and we're coaches in the merge uh, section, which uh -huh. is for premarital, um, so mm -hmm. seriously dating or engaged couples. Yeah. Um, so we go through an eight week um, uh, session with, with a small group of, of couples. Um, and hopefully prepare them well for, for marriage. Um, yeah, that's great yeah. stuff. Yeah. And we also will help out on the on re-engage at times and give our marriage testimony and, mm -hmm. and sometimes being involved as a small group leader there. So. Yeah, that's a really great ministry. Mm -hmm. um, there's merge, foundations, re-engage with various, and, and merges, you said, uh, engaged or seriously dating mm -hmm. couples. Foundations is the first three-ish years of marriage, um, and then re-engage is a marriage enrichment for anybody who's been married three-plus years. Um, what have you found has been uh, has been something you've learned from helping in marriage ministry, or something you've seen um, I, in it? Yeah, I, I think uh, you know. Helping, you know, as you, you, as you know, you teaching or doing anything where you're leading or, or yeah. um, taking that facilitating role, um, you know, you see the need in your own life. Um, and that's, you know, one of the things that we took, Krista and I, is, you know, really uh, investing in our marriage. Um, and it's so easy not to do that. Yeah. Um, with kids come along. The business of life, responsibilities. Of life, yeah. And so, you know, taking the time to, you know, especially when you have small kids, to find that time to, to go out, you know, have have a night alone and and, and date each yeah. other. Um, and uh, What was natural, now you have to be intentional. You have to be very intentional about it. Yeah. And, you know, that was a struggle for, for us at times. And... Uh, um, and I think it's something we're really investing in now, uh, and it really has helped as we become, you know, moving towards empty nesting. Yes, because you know we are on mission together. Yes, now. It, it's taking beyond just focusing on our marriage, but really re going past that. And how do we serve together? And how yeah. do we be on mission mission together to to grow a kingdom? So that's. That's been something I've taken um, from it, um, and you know, hopefully along the way too, we're helping people see that that that's the purpose of marriage more so than just having a good marriage. Right, right. But to um, to use that that that, that be a um, this relationship, a relationship, this fruit bearing, kingdom serving kind of thing. Yeah. Beyond just your home and 
your kids, yep. uh, which are still there. <laughs> yep. You don't stop parenting. No. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's great. Um, I've noticed that <clears throat> with a number of folks who work in our marriage ministry, mm-hmm. um, it's a piece of uh, their ongoing ministry, and many of them are coming out of, going into, uh, coming out of kids being in the home, going into mm-hmm. empty nest, um, and it is, the, it is the kind of thing where um, it used to just all be natural and easy. Mm-hmm. Kids come along. That's the focus. Mm-hmm. Work, career, and the marriage is like the last thing in that order of priorities. You have to be intentional about it. Yes. That's one of the things that's really helpful about doing something like re-engage mm-hmm. because it forces you to do that um, in ways that are helpful. Um, and, and one thing I, I noticed for us is... Uh, it helps us regain a sense of, of uh, yeah, we're a team, mm-hmm. uh, which we used to say a lot early on. Um, and then just, you know, the busyness and responsibilities um, of the day to day. We're still a team, but it doesn't always feel feel like it mm-hmm. when when what was natural and needs to be intentional is just sort of, uh, we don't have, who's got time to be intentional when you're going yeah. from dawn to dusk and... Uh, you're 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 dead at the end of the day. Well, and you get beho- you get beyond the well. We just don't have anything in common. Well, you right. know, we don't have to have all our interests in common. We have uh, <laughs> my interests, <laughs> my wife's interests, not always the same. Not always the same, but, <laughs> but we have a common purpose and we sure. have a common and that, that's right. that's the the piece that I think hopefully we're we're, we're instilling and and uh, encouraging in other couples as well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's great work. Um, in marriage ministry. Um, in your work at Artisan, um, in your serving at church, um, other contexts maybe you've been in, whether you've been a follower or a leader in whatever contexts, what what do you think makes for good leadership? And 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 I think I have a couple of follow-up questions about that probably too. But in what you've seen, I mean, you're an elder. Mm-hmm. You're a part of our leadership. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> in your experience, in all those contexts, um, what makes for a good leader? Yeah, and that's it's a that's a great question because it's it's something you know I think as of even at work or at church or really every area, I, I've often ended up in in leadership roles and it's it's always a question of how, how do I do that well um, and and I think you know the the servant leadership mindset is where I tend to, to lean towards is you know how, how do I um, lead through acts of service um, mm-hmm. and and showing people that that you know they're you know they're of value and importance um, to the organization, to, to the, the organization. team, work, yeah, and that's that's often you know I, I find it it's funny I find it easier in some areas where I lead and in, in others I, I tend to gravitate like at work where I was not a leader at all times of my career I was uh, you know in, not in a, a clear leadership role mm-hmm. um, and then grew into those roles and so I I. I can catch myself falling back into the doer mentality um, rather than in, in not meaning what uh, do you know, trying to do for them rather than allow them to learn and grow and, and serve supporting their and equipping their and doing act, yeah, yeah. Um, and so it's it's something I continue to to learn yeah um, I think we all in leadership end up often fighting against becoming the doer again. Mm-hmm. Um, it depends on where you're at in, in all of that. But, you know, I, you, you hear a lot of people say, oh, it's just easy for me to go ahead and do it. Yeah. That's, at, that's, at times. That's and then you also, <clears throat> um, you also feel like if I ask someone else to do something that I'm not also doing, uh, then why should they ever listen to me or do what it, they, they need to be doing and I'm helping them mm-hmm. need to do? Um, so, <laughs> um, like, w- we will often say, Things sometimes on staff like you, 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 we're picking up brooms too. Yeah. Um, when we went multi-site, I stopped having to pick up some brooms mm-hmm. big time. 
Uh, and that was a real difficult, it still is for me a difficult mm -hmm. transition. I try to uh, do a lot of things that I probably shouldn't be doing. Um, yeah. But what I've noticed, and, and what you said made me think of this, oftentimes if I'm not thinking about how to help people do what they're equipped and gifted to do, and I'm doing things instead of them, instead of equipping them to do it, that's keeping them from ministry exactly. or serving mm -hmm. or doing their job well. Yeah, yeah I, I found that to be a struggle for me. Yeah, so I'm trying to learn how to, to think more, what do they need to right. do their job well, and how do I supply that, rather than be the doer or just come alongside and do it with them. Yeah. And, and that was my go-to early on, and so I'm learning more. Well, you are a male. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I'm learning more how, to, how do I give them what they need. And, and, and how do you get them. there? How do you get to those answers? Um, well, what have you found? Because um, I think for me, I'll just like, I'll, I'll ask, hey, what do you need or how can I help? Or, um, but how, what do you see are strategies for that that you employ? Well, you know, a lot of it is, is spending the time, um, you know, with them, talking with them, you know, asking them what they need. But a lot of times that people don't always know what they need yet because True. they're learning their role and they're learning what to do. So, you know, by if you have been involved or had been done those type of roles before, you kind of have an idea of what they want. So you kind of try to guide the discussion and maybe help suggest some ideas of things they could, and then have them come back um, yes. and basically come back with the same suggestions you gave them possibly, <laughs> but but at least they start to understand that that's, that's what I need to yeah. do my job and uh, or to do the task that I'm being given. So yeah. You mentioned the servant leader uh, thing earlier. Your wife says servant leadership is how Carl leads our family. Mm. Well, she's... That's nice. Come on, Krista, she, tell us something. Yeah, she's being nice. Embarrassing. <laughs> um, here's a good question from someone related to you. Um, what made you come to FCC? How'd you get here and... Yeah, and uh, yeah. Yeah, we came, we, you know, when we moved here, um, we actually went to Grace Fellowship Church in John City for a good, uh, probably almost 20 years. I was going to say, I thought it was 20-ish. Yeah. yeah, and when we first moved here, we could not find that, uh, that small group-based church that, um, and and so that was something we were interested in, good kids, kids men, obviously, because we were looking at starting a family. Mm -hmm. Um, and so we went there, but you know, after you know, 20 years, a lot of distance, um, and one of the things I saw, um, it, Krista saw it first, but it took me a little longer, was you know, we, we just weren't engaging in, in, in the body like we needed to. Mm. Um, and after a couple, few years of wrestling with that, of not yeah. wanting to change, yeah. Um, God really got a hold of me and said, "Okay, we 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 gotta we gotta do something different." Um, and so we really liked the worship one serve one mentality of how do we get engaged and involved in serving. Yeah. Um, and so that's what we did three years ago. We we came here, and I think within a month we were you know I was on the uh, on the. Uh, guest services You're team. You're worshiping and serving. Yeah. Yes, and pretty quickly. <laughs> within a month after that, I think I was a service leader. Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> with a month You're after that. You're pretty quickly engineering things yeah. uh, on Sunday mornings and on the guest team. Yeah. yeah. So, and then we, you know, we went through next steps. The first time I think you, we had next steps, um, that first go around. Huh. Um, and uh, uh, yeah, and it just went from there. So I, I think it was the, the, the serve in, in our both our boys went to the yeah. youth here before that, so that was, and we we actually knew more people at First Christian than we did <laughs> at Grace that we went to relative to the whole. Yeah. Yes, I'm sure that's true. Yeah. It almost be hard for it not to be true. Yeah, Grace is a great church. Yeah, yeah, cool. Um, another another uh, another question here. Uh, what is one thing current Carl wished he could tell younger Carl? Mm. I think I think this person just called you old. Yeah, he probably. You're did. old enough to have the perspective um, to tell he, younger uh, Carl stuff he should have he. heard <laughs> or or be, been aware of. Oh, there's so much, so many things. Um, I I would 
probably go back to what I said with the the work uh, issues. Yeah. And and the funny thing was, was I knew that from the get go that that was we all did that that was my bent was yes. to be for those of us who are workaholics yeah, yeah. to 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 overdo it yeah and um, you know looking back there's years that I said I would not do those you know take away from family from church from from really things that were important and uh, and I did and yeah. you know um, you know I wish I could go back and kind of shake that younger car all day but <laughs> why, why do you think um, why do you think for you is workaholism the right word for it what, what's the the word for that for you yeah I, I think uh, I, I don't know if I would even call it that in, in the sense that I, I don't know that I find my identity through work. Um, I think it was a, more a sense of pride of, you know, something I could do well in okay. and did do well in. Okay. Um, and it became that idol of elevating self um, from a sense of pride. So achievement. So much achievement. That feeding was, you. Yeah, I'm, I'm not a person that I'm terrible. I, I, have, I, I try very hard to get better at applauding others and patting people on the back because I'm just someone that doesn't need that from others. So you're not a natural encourager of others in that sense? No, I'm not. And, and so because I don't need it, when I say I don't need it, it's not always nice to hear, but Hey, you're doing I a great get, job in this yeah, interview. Oh, no, thank you. <laughs> but I get a lot of that that sense of value pride out of out of accomplishment the work itself. doing it yeah meeting that goal meeting uh, that expect yeah. you know and so i think that's where that came from not so much just to work to work um but uh, to find that value there yeah yeah is that a man thing uh, i don't know if it's a man only thing but i think it's probably more you see that more in men, I think, how we with were the work, raised. With yeah. the what I produce, what I do mm -hmm. thing. Yeah. yeah, and I think we're, you know, at least in the, in my generation, I just call myself old. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, we're supposed to be the provider, supposed to be the provider, and, and you see that as, you know, that's, this is what I'm supposed to do. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, I, yeah, I think there's, at least in, in our, our generation, I'll, I'll include you in <laughs> you graduated ninety from where? From college? Uh, ninety five. Ninety five. Yeah. Me too. Yeah, I think we're pretty much the same. Um, age. Yeah. So we did have a couple good questions here. Um, hmm. What's the carlitarian diet? <laughs> so you have your own diet? Yes. Whatever Carl likes, Carl eats. That's, a, that's pretty simple. It's which is not much. So I am. Are you a boring eater? I am notorious. Picky. I am extremely picky. Like really, the, the best thing that ever was invented in my mind was the divided plate. So meaning you don't want your food to touch. I don't want food to Ooh, touch. Ooh, now right into the inner Carl. Yes, I. I don't know why. No, I I'm with you. I don't like him touching. I don't, I don't want to touch. It's a. Uh, it's both. A taste and a texture thing for texture, me? yes. Both. And so I try all kinds of stuff, and I just don't like it. And so I have very few things. I, it really was hard for Krista when we first were married because she thought she was a bad cook, and she is not. She is a great cook, but I'm just a bad eater. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good line. She's a good cook. I'm a bad eater. <laughs> I'm, a bad I'm a bad eater in a sense, too. I, I don't know if it's the same way, but I'm super boring and picky, and I don't. I mean, you said you've tried lots of different foods, or will. I I don't want to try different foods. I just want the same old boring things. Don't give me something new. Well, I've traveled, you know, with work and stuff, and sure. so you know, you're, you end up you, you kind of have to eat it. Yeah. And seven courses of tofu is not my thing. Um, <laughs> One course of tofu <laughs> no. is not my thing. So yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's it's a pretty boring meal plan for me. But. So the carlitarian is whatever you want, but it's boring and you're picky? Well, no, I don't, I don't consider it boring. I, I mean, I, I'm a meat and potatoes guy. I'm a lot, you know, Absolutely. That, that grilled meat and potatoes, uh, very few vegetables. 
but Crystal likes vegetables, so we, we kind of we buy one plate and split it. <laughs> cool. Uh, another question um, says, how have you grown spiritually since coming to FCC? Oh, ah, that's a great question. Um, I'd say in a lot of different ways. Um, I think one of the ways is is elevating the spiritual leadership role mm. um, in the family. You mm. know, um, taking that more seriously, of being more intentional. Yeah. Um, and you know, still you know, still struggle at times with that, but but uh, but I think it's one area that. It, really tried to to focus on and grow um and uh you know another area that chris and i've talked about that i wanted to to really start moving more is is, is really uh, spend more time in prayer and and grow that prayer life um mm-hmm. beyond praying for the needs of of things but but really um more for um growth and for um advancing God's kingdom and, and more of those more leaning towards that. But so that that's that those are the areas that um where I have grown and where I want to continue to grow. Yeah, yeah. Good. Good stuff. Um this is a good question here. Um growing faith without seeing it modeled by your family is hard. Uh who have you looked to for influence as you've matured in your faith? Hmm. Yeah, that's there have been some influences and in, for you and your faith, other than my amazing preaching. You can oh, just, yeah. Let's just assume that. Well, that's a sound. Yeah, assume, yeah, right? Yeah. Now, there, you know, through the years, God gives you different people. Um, you know, in college, I had a good group of guys, and we still stay in touch. Was that through IV? Yeah, yeah. and and but we were all roommates at one point, and um, you know, challenge each other, hold each other accountable, do all those. You know, we dug in deep on you know <laughs> every all, issue all, every yeah. issue <laughs> all the theological things till 2 a.m. in and, the morning it was great um but then you know past that through the years we've had different small groups where we've had uh, different men um different you know um and too many to name really so as go through the normal regular programs and processes of university church those mm-hmm. kinds of settings yeah and definitely like i said a small group and that's why we were interested in finding that when we first got here and that's yeah. what we you know we're also help in that area as far as coaching on life groups because we we see that as extremely important that we yeah. come together as as a body um not just on sundays but also right. through the week and and sh- and you know, do life together and hold each other accountable, encourage one another, yeah. you know, pray for one another. Um, and so it's through all those, you know, avenues. Um, you know, some of the, the, the current guys, the elders, and that uh, became, have become really good friends with Mark Lieber and mm-hmm. Chuck. I've known for a long, both of them for a long time. Mm-hmm. And, so yeah, there's there's all a, and now a you're ton getting to know Mike uh, better than Mike's you knew super, him. <laughs> yeah, I get to know Mike at work too. So. Yeah. Um, all right, let's rapid fire a few things here. Um, what was a difficult challenge in life you've had to overcome, hmm. and how to make you stronger? Oh, that one's uh, rapid fire. That's hard to rapid fire. That's right. Um, we're, that, we're going to serious things now that are rapid fire here. That one. I, is you would hear again if you came to re-engage plug for re-engage um but uh for marriage testimony was i I was you know i was a a child of experience with divorce and my my parents um multiple divorces and then they ended up back together together really yeah in the end and been married for i don't even know how many years now 30 40 years now. wow that's great still but a difficult challenge still a difficult challenge so i went to eight different schools before high school Dude. so yeah i'm tracking that, up me too yeah. I, same kind of thing so that was a difficult i became very independent because of that okay um and that's been part of my struggle as well is how do i allow others in mm. because yeah. i became well, i gotta take care of myself and i gotta also take care of my, you know, my family. During how do you think that experience, I mean, you, you talked a little bit there about what you've learned from it and how you've had to grow from it. How has this made you stronger that, uh, 
that situation. Stronger. I mean, I think part one, the strength side of that is, is you know, um, Krista will often say, I'm, I'm the rock of the family. You know, I can, I weather things well. I, I you know, allow, you know, I can deal with issues and I can yeah, yeah. be there um, uh, to help, encourage, do all those things, even in the midst of a lot of stuff going on. So um, I think that's been a strength of mine, you know, that God's given me through that. Yeah. Um, that answers the next question, which was, how did you see God working through that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's been a part of who you've become now and a way that is uh, foundational for your family. Yeah. Um, what are you seeing and learning because of COVID? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? Just I think we've you know we've talked about this a lot in in various meetings. Yeah. Um, but it's you know it, the need to come together as a body. Um, it, being an introvert, yeah. you know, in the first few weeks, it's kind of like, whew, you yeah, know, yeah. You know, at home, <laughs> it's kind of like, ooh, this is not. You that see bad. all those social media posts and memes about I was made for this. Yeah. Uh, nobody's posting that online now. No. No, the I mass think, isolation is real. Yeah, after a few weeks, you know, you start saying, "No, I'm, I'm, I miss being around, and we need it." And um, yeah, and I think that the whole mindset of, of you know, I understand the concerns and all, all that. Oh, sure, yeah. But in the end, our our spiritual health is more important to me than than worrying about the physical. Um, mm. And you know, coming together is. Um, you know, very important for us as a body. So yeah, yeah, definitely. I think that's a, a big lesson people are going to continue to learn, um, and, and that can be a lesson le that we learn, even while we take seriously the idea that this is obviously real and a problem. Mm -hmm. um, they're not mutually exclusive. Um, what is one of the largest lessons you've learned from being a parent? <laughs> that. You're you're never fully equipped to do the job. <laughs> that's for sure. And that you need to depend on God. And yeah. and that's yeah. you know, I depended on myself way too much during a lot of those years of trying to oh, I sh I need to know how to do this. I'm you know I'm you know the the father and I should have the answers. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And you know you're you're not equipped. Um, you need you need, need God to to guide you through that and give yeah. you the strength and the wisdom and discernment and all that and uh, and not rely on self yeah good stuff what is God currently teaching you hmm. I think it goes back to um, what I was saying with with uh, prayer life is just dependent that dependency on him um, and COVID is, I think, stir that too. It's just presses on that issue. Yeah, just even more so is um, how, how do I how do I continue to rely and and lean and depend on Him more and more um, rather than trying to do it myself. And that's that independence piece of that wants to pop up. Yeah. But how do I continue to to grow in that way and and um, and, and just have him guide my steps rather than me try to set my own path. Yeah. Last question. What are you excited or encouraged about? Uh, you know, there's a lot to be excited about. I, I, you know, I, the marriage ministry is, is exciting for me. Um, just to be able to, to um, give back to those young couples and, and their just starting that journey um, is is really exciting. Um, I, I think the multi-site piece is and is very exciting. And, and what's exciting to me is that everything that I'm mentioning is more kingdom work mindset, which mm. five, ten years ago, I don't know that mm. that would have been that answer. Um, for you? For me. Yeah, yeah. And, and you know, we're... You know where was where I, where was I putting my efforts and my you know my thoughts and my yeah. energy into and so um, yeah the, the multi site and the whole um, being part of Afton and seeing that 
take off and grow and yeah. um, and think about the future. I, I think cool. I think that's exciting. Absolutely. Fun fact: Carl had changed way more diapers than I had when we got married. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he cleans a better bathroom than anyone on the planet. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks to my mom. <laughs> However. That bathroom cleaning that um, doesn't happen very often anymore, <laughs> and it takes the entire it takes the time that um, your wife can clean the entire rest house. of the house. <laughs> you clean the one bathroom; she's got everything else in the same amount of time. I'm that way. Yes. Uh, if I get going on something like that, I, I yeah, we're the talking ADHD toothbrush, take off the escutcheon plate. You know the little. <laughs> You know, it's it's that detailed. <laughs> you have a problem, my yes, man. Yes, I do. You have a problem. <laughs> yes, I Gotta do. See that through to the end. I have lots of problems. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Well, thanks for joining us. Yes. Good stuff. Thanks for joining us for Coffee Convos, y'all. See you next week. <laughs>